Okay, so we've got our, our um, armatures built and our wrapping is underway. We have a little bit more wrapping to do before we start sculpting and adding shapes. So I want to build up his body a little bit fatter. So I'm going to get another full six inch piece of our core wool, white or copper if you're working on your brown rabbit, and split it into quarters. This, the, the width of the roving varies. If You may split it into thirds, um, but it's better to start smaller anyway and add more. But um, the point is to have about this much and then to have your sculpture end up the same size as this one. So if it looks skinny, put, a, put on some more wool. So I want to get him a little fatter as we get back towards his hind legs. So I'm going to concentrate the wool there. So probably do this twice. That was once. And I'll take another piece and do it again. Just get him fat. Depends on how fat you want your rabbit. Very fat. You like them fat, huh? Plump. Plump and juicy. That <laughs> makes the best <laughs> rabbit stew. <laughs> okay. Now we want to put a piece that's going to bring the leg together with the body. You might have like a kind of skinny spot in here. Um, so we can use this um, one of these four pieces that we had. But I'm going to draft it out. I'm actually going to split it in half this way. So now I have two drafted out three to four inch pieces. And you just want to start on the body, go around the top of the thigh, and return to the body. I'm not even wrapping all of the way around and returning. I'm just I'm just like one simple underneath and then return to the body. And that just brings the legs and the body together. So I'm going to start on the body, go around the thigh, and return to the body. And then we got to stab it. Really try to just concentrate on making those thighs flat. We gotta stab it from the back, get all this extra fluff nailed down. I think he needs one more piece, so I'm just gonna take this last piece and go around. What is a rabbit's favorite game? You're just full of them uh, today. I, I got lots. Hopscotch. Yes! Oh, I'm, I'm on you fire are, today. You are on. <laughs> Stealing all my punchlines, but whatever. <laughs> I am on with my elementary. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbit humor. Uh, he's a little wimpy right here at the base of the neck. So I'm going to say, oh, wait, I have a piece of core wool. I don't know what this is from, but it's about four inches long. And about, you know, inch to half, half an inch wide. And I'm just going to go right around the base of the neck and fatten that up a little bit. Shouldn't be quite so wimpy. You really don't want them to have a lot of neck. If you're ending up with a lot of neck, morph it into head. Okay. I want, I see one more thing to wrap, which is around the middle of the head. And I just want to start to get a little more width here, just a little more bulk there. So I'm going to take a four inch piece of core wool and take a quarter of it draft it out a little. This core wall is so fluffy. And then 
go around the head here a little bit. Right around the center. Now that I have this filled in like a crescent, I can put wool around like this. The next thing that we want to do is put some detail colors on the legs. And then we will build a chest and a face and then make a pelt. Oh, and a tail and a pelt. So, um, to make them rabbit footy looking, um, I like to really exaggerate this hawk. And I'm going to use that same crisscross technique to make a triangular little hawk. And so now I'm going to use the medium gray. We wrapped the legs. Oh, Talbot's here. <laughs> we have a um, sharp bend in the leg, which is his back of his foot. And we want to take our medium gray, and we want a really thin piece. So I'm making it about four inches long and just really thin, like, you know, less than a quarter of an inch when you squeeze it. And what I want to do is come down the back of the leg and then do that same idea where I go from here right to here, skipping the point. So right there, and then I'm going to go back around here I'm going to do it one more time to there and see how it just fills in that corner and it gives him a little joint there. And then I'm going to just go to the end of the foot with whatever I have left and stab that a little bit. So on your brown bunny, you might use your teddy bear brown for this part. Because then what we're going to do is go with the next dark color, which on the brown bunny would be the natural black, but on the um, seal point bunny is a little bit of seal point. So I take a really tiny little bit, it's just a real wispy little piece, and now I'm just going to go around the end of the foot. And you can make your little foot, you know, bigger, smaller. Try to get kind of a rabbit foot shape to it. So now I blend from the off-white to the medium gray to the seal point. And just to bring the off-white together with the medium gray here, I'm going to take some of the oatmeal or light gray and just go around this top area. Everyone's is going to be a little different. You might have to do something different to get it to blend, but you can get nice blends by just adding little bits of of color. Real thin amounts. And it starts to starts to blend together. So I'll do the other one with you one more time. We have I am super zooming. Okay, we have our thin strip of medium gray. I'm going around the top of the leg, exaggerating that, I feel like we're shadowy now, exaggerating that um, bend, and then doing the figure eight into the center of the bend. I'm going to take the rest down the foot, and then I'm going to add a little bit of seal point to the end of the foot. <laughs> what do you sense? People. People coming. I think it's Marsha. And then I'm just going to do that little bit of light gray, the top of the leg. <laughs> Milo, I'm glad you're on the lookout. <clears throat> On the front legs, it's more just a matter of, of blending. So I'll just take a tiny bit 
of seal point on the end of the foot. I mean really little wisp. I'm just trying to get the color on there. And then maybe a tiny bit of light gray where the arm, where the um, off-white meets the medium gray. And then just stab all that together. If you need to, you can put another thin piece of medium gray to blend again. So on the brown bunny, this would be, you'd be working with um, copper and teddy bear brown and the um, natural black. I just love this seal point color. And the texture too, it's a nice one. I need a more fine needle. What do you get when you cross a rabbit with a leaf blower? Oh. I don't know. A hair dryer. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I didn't say they were good. <laughs> all right. So our little legs are all blended and shaped. And now we can build the face and add our pelt. Let's um, let's make a little tail first. Let's just get that out of the way. So I'm going to take a little bit of, I'm just going to pull right from the end, off-white core, and then I want it to go from dark to light. I want it to have the same seal point color coloring. So I'll put dark, and then I'll put some white. So I like to put my dark and my light, and then I like to lay a thin layer of gray to bring them together. And if I need to, I can put, that was the medium gray, and put a little bit of light gray too. And so that kind of just makes the transition from the light to the dark. And then you've got to flip it over so that the pretty colors are on the bottom. And I like to stab the center just to establish where it is. And then you can use the tool, it makes a great little tail. I like to fold the back, um, the top uh, sort of one eighth inch in, roll it in, and then fold your wool in following the, um, the shape of the tool. I'm actually going to do the, the top angles first and pull it out just so I get that triangle shape. And then I'll just roll these in. And that just makes, when you flip it over, it makes a little graded tail. A lot of my seal point went into the center. Live and learn. And then I like to put on the bunnies a little white poof. Even on the brown bunny, I put a little white poof under his tail. So I take some of the top coat white, fluff it up, and then just kind of dab it a little bit willy-nilly into the center of the tail. Leave it a little bit fluffy. And then I just put them down. And felt. Now if your tail ends up really big, you can cheat it smaller by scooting it you know, farther onto the body, or you can pull some of this off. But you want to have this fluff to attach the shape. Whenever we make shapes that we're putting on, um, I usually create a finished edge and then leave a fringy edge to attach it. Just seems to be the way, the way it goes, the way it works best. Okay. So now he's got a little tail and then we want to give him a nice chest. Bunnies have a nice full chest, even if it is um, just fluff, it looks full. So I'm going to take my white top coat and I'm going to pull about a six inch piece, stretch it out a little, and then I'm going to use um, the one inch wide side of the tool and wrap within about a two inch area. So I'm kind of staying within two inches 
that feels a little wimpy. If you're watching ahead of time, pull an eight inch piece. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add a couple more inches. It just feels a little, not quite enough. Okay, then you slide that off and it will be the chest. So I turn them over and spread them out and I let a fringy edge go onto the belly and a fringy edge go up onto the neck. And I start by tacking it on the sides and the ends. And if you're making a little doe bunny, uh, female bunny, you can actually give it a pretty big poof because they they have that um, oh I forget what it's called a little extra fluff there because they use it they pull from it to build the nest for their babies okay so now we have a chest like that and then let's build the face next and then we'll come back to putting the top coat fibers um, on the body. The first thing that I want to do to the face is get a little chin under here. And I'm going to use the Zoli tool to do that. If you have a sharpened pencil, um, that'll work well too. And I'm going to use my white, take about a four inch, four inch piece, stretch it out a little, and then I'm going to start by going around the tool, round, the rounded end, and then I'm going to go onto the facets of the angled end, and then the rounded end, and then crisscross over the pointy end again, and then slide that off. And then when I stab this to make the shape, I want to round this point in, so I want a nice round chin. really want to keep all the fiber, don't let it stretch out too much. You want to keep it all up in the end. And then I'm actually going to roll it in my hand a little bit because um, it's a little bit fat. There we go. Just stretched it out a little bit. But we're looking for a nice little ghost shape here. Nice little bunny chin like that. So what airline do rabbits use? Uh, you might get it. I might get it. Wait. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm going through the airlines. <laughs> I don't know what, what one. Jennifer, you know? Uh, oh, I just <laughs> called her out. <laughs> British no, not. You're not getting it. Hairways. British hairways. <laughs> yes. Okay. And then we position it just even with the teeth or the end of the nose. And I'm using a uh, 36 gauge needle because I just really want to tack it on. I like to use a strong needle when I'm tack want something to stick and I'm tacking it on. And it looks a little weird. At the moment and I just let the fringe come down the neck don't worry about it too much make sure you don't pull their head down and like felt their head locked down make sure when you put the chin on that you really stretch it out so that um, they don't get locked now we need to make oh you know what I'm gonna take my strong needle and I'm actually going to indicate where the eyes will go this will be helpful I think for a long time I was putting them too far back and too far down. So I'm going to make some stabs just in front of what would be the halfway line of the head. So here's the back half of the head. Here's the front half of the head. I'm going to stab right in front of that. And then the trick is getting it in the same spot on the other side. So I just basically made some dents, and then I want to make two cheeks to go under these dents. So this time around, I'm actually going to use the core wool. It just makes shapes 
better. And um, let's see, if you take off a four inch piece and split it into quarters, two of these quarters should make a good cheek. It might be a little bit much, but we'll see. I'm going to wrap gently around the um, round end of the tool. Just should be good. I'm just trying to keep it even and I'm trying to keep it all within one inch. I'm going to slide that off and that's my shape. Do the same thing over here. Not pulling too, too tight. I'm trying to keep it smooth. So each of these will be a little cheek. And it's going to go under the eye on the side of the face and end right before the end of the nose because we're going to make another piece that makes the muzzle. So I start by stabbing the back on even with the back of the head. Don't let it come down the neck or anything weird like that. And then I'm just going to stab the front on. And I want the cheeks to go right up under that eye. I've made the muzzle so many different ways and I keep I keep changing it and um, make sure you look down on your sculpture every once in a while like see how this one this this always happens to me the um, <laughs> the right side ends up farther forward than the back so I just kind of try to even them up with a little bit of stabbing don't know why that happens just the angle I felt I guess so you can look at it from the top, you can look at it from the bottom, make sure it's all even. So now we're going to make a big U-shaped piece that will become the muzzle. It will be a big half circle that we will dent in the middle and it creates these poofs. <laughs> So to do it, we're going to lay it out kind of like we did the tail. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of core wool, about a square inch, and stretch it out. And we want it to have that same darker point. So I'm going to put the seal point at the tip. This is thin pieces, about half an inch by two, two inches. What we're going to end up with is a two inch square. So this is, this is two inches. Let's see. Yeah. And I don't count the fringe. If I count the fringe, it's looking more like three inches, but I'm really, I want a dense two inch square. So then I'm going to put some of the white, real thin layer. And now I want to blend the two together. So I'll put some of the medium gray that and then just a little bit of light gray, a tiny, tiny bit like that. And I'm going to just make sure everything stays where I put it. So I just stab it a little bit before I flip it over. Now this time, because of the way the tool is shaped, um, but I can lay it on there to help show you the size of the shape. I want to roll that end back and I'm actually going to stab that a little bit. And then I'm going to stab a half circle that goes about half an inch wider than the tool. The tool is a inch wide. Oh, I think we're getting a delivery. I hear something. All right, I'll try to stop. Okay, so I folded the top edge back, and now I'm going to roll these edges in roll is not a good word fold I don't want you to roll like a tight little bun I want you to just let the fibers come into the center and you should end up with a nice broad half circle so let's measure it it's almost two inches wide it's about an inch inch and a half inch and three quarters wide and the reason it needs to be so broad is because it needs to go 
all of the way to the sides of the mouth on each side. So I felt that a little bit. Let me just stab it with this thing. You want this, and you don't want it to be totally flat like a pancake, but you want it to be really well felted um, on this end. And then it's going to go, it's hard to show how this goes. Like I said, I want it to come to each side of the chin, and now he looks like a platypus <clears throat> rabbit, but we have this to shape, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to tack it down to make sure it doesn't come off center. Each side all the way around. It's takes a little bit of stretching and you let the fringe encompass this cheek that helps get some white on the cheek blend it together if it was the caramel bunny it would be if it's the caramel bunny we would have a copper yeah we would have the copper core coming back and you would layer the copper you would layer the copper the teddy bear brown to the natural black. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we have this weird, like, hugongous upper lip. And I'm going to take a really strong needle, strongest you have, and stab a dent in the middle. Like this. And now we're starting to shape the rabbit's muzzle.